for your first 10 years, you mostly just climbed. Then you got yeah. into training. And so I'm curious just kind of what your, how you see that now. And if that's been something that you struggled with is figuring out, you know, how much should you do in focused, coached, systemized training versus what you're feeling like on any given day. There was like a three or four year period where I did on a kind of periodization, but then, you know, there's also been some times when I did like nonlinear type periodization, like Steve Bechtel has really coached me a lot in that regard. But yeah, as far as like, you know, keeping a journal and attaching weight to my harness and going in and I really haven't done much of that for years. Um, and I think that probably within the next year or two, I will do some more of that just to see if I can squeeze the more, uh, you know, gains out of that type of method. But yeah, for me, I mean, the thing that has been, the thing that I realized if I spend two months just in the gym, climbing on plastic and, and hanging on a hangboard, um, I go back out on rock and it feels so foreign to me. And it takes me, even though I feel at heart like a rock climber, I'm, I'm much more of a rock climber than I am like a, you know, training athlete. Um, it, it's, I still, it still feels foreign to me and there's still, and I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong or something that could totally be it, but it always feels like there's something missing. Like I can come out of the gym feeling piping strong, but then I go on to rock. If I, you know, if I haven't touched rock for a few months, I'll come on to rock and it'll be like, I'll feel like there's something totally missing. Like, like I've missed a piece of the puzzle and then it's some weeks before I, it all like clicks. And I think that that's totally normal for most people. But what I've noticed is that I can integrate a lot more climbing into my training and that could be on a board, but then, I mean, I like, I really like outside climbing as part of my actual training. And the more I integrate, the better I feel when I go on that trip. Like, it, it's like, it's one for one. You know, if I have one day a week of outside climbing, then when I get on the trip, you know, I feel a certain way. If I have two days a week, then I feel even better. If I have three days a week, then I feel even better. Um, so some things I've experimented with in the past couple of years, it is like going day on day off where I'm actually outside climbing every other day, but I'm not going all the way to the death. I'm more using it as like more or less my warm up. And then at the end of the day, when I come back, I'll add in some supplemental training exercises, like some hangboarding or some weights or something like that. But then I'll rest entirely the next day because otherwise for me, that'd be too much volume to do that like two on one off or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a lot of success with that. The only issue with that is that once you go on a trip, ideally you really want to be climbing two on one off because you just to have the, to have enough volume to actually get enough tries on whatever route it is or whatever boulder or whatever to do it in the limited amount of time. So it's like, you know, it's so funny. There's all these, like, you're just pulling levers. I feel like with all the training, you know, you're constantly like balancing between okay, is my power really good? Okay, well then my stamina is probably going to be a little bit worse. And okay, I'm feeling really good statically, but you know, can I do it dynamically? And then on, and same stuff with this. It's like, can I go really high intensity, but more rest? Okay, well then when it comes time to actually try and put this, put these performance gains to rock, then you're like, now I'd like to actually be at the wall more than like three days a week, you know? So I, I think the, the especially with training, Every person should be their own little scientist and, and listen and learn, but um, experiment, you know, and, and try something slightly different each season and take the things that work for you and, and kind of get rid of the things that seem like they didn't. Um, and if there's someone out there that you really trust, then go all in on what they're saying and, and just see what's up, with it, you know, because because there's just so many different paths to the same conclusion. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching these videos. Quick 30 seconds to tell you about the Patreon that I've started to help fund this massive operation running out of my podcast slash YouTube slash utility closet, which I'm coming to you from right here. Um, check out the Patreon down below. I've got pro clinics with some of the biggest names in the sport, exclusive for patrons, helping you learn how to level up in your training and your performance, all sorts of other bonus content. Appreciate your support, check it out. I wanna kind of just zoom out and take like a global um look at things and hear from you like what struggle means to you through the lens of climbing 
Um, you know, what's what's your relationship with struggle? Um, well, I would say that struggle is kind of you have the beginning and the end, and struggle is everything in between, right? Um, yeah. and, I mean, in regards to climbing, I think that just efforts and um, commitment, and I'm trying to think of some words that are analogous to struggle, you know, but I, I think that. When I think about struggle, I just think about um, kind of trying without any definite certainty about the outcome. Hmm. Um, and, and that's like uh, not always the case, but, you know, a large part that's the case. Like you said, no matter what level you're at, I think that it wouldn't be fun if we knew for certain if we'd succeed or not or if we knew... If we knew exactly how to do some route or to to get stronger or whatever it was, if it was, if it was like, um, if it was really obvious, I don't think that it would be that fun for all of us. So, so I think that that figuring it out and kind of like dealing with the unknown is part of the interesting thing about climbing. Yeah, I like that. Um, has that changed for you? You've been climbing for a bit now. Um, how long you been at this 20 years or so um you know has has your has your relationship with struggle or that view changed since you know your earlier days yeah i think i think it has i i think primarily it's changed in that i um i've learned to enjoy kind of the, the, all the times between beginning and end um, hmm. on each different route or challenge that like I you know I come face to face with um, and I, I think just more patience in general and more I have so much experience now like living in that space of uncertainty and the space of of really wanting something and trying really hard um that now with with the experience i think it's it just seems it feels more natural to me i think it was more kind of anxiety inducing or stressful earlier on um because that's really kind of what it's about right is like if you want to improve at anything in life and it goes beyond climbing there's a certain level of discomfort that you have to voluntarily put yourself through and it's it's so much easier said than done and, but the reality is that the more relaxed or the more patient you become with those times, the the more access you're going to have to uh, real growth, you know? So, yeah, I, I think that if I've learned, you know, like from a very macro perspective, I think that if I've learned anything or things have changed in regards to that over the last 18 years, it's just that. It's just like, you know... I, this is this is how it's, this is how it's gonna be, you know, and, and I'm gonna settle into this experience and try and learn the best I can from it, and it might turn out, uh, you know, quote unquote successful or not. But you know, I'm gonna basically just come into the realization that I'm gonna live in this space of being challenged and being uncertain a lot, like most of the time. 